12, 10 o'clock a.m. for me. I'm in Washington State, but you're in Missouri, right? Yes. yes. Okay, very nice. I this I believe this is my first, or at least one of my first video conferences with Missouri, so I'm really looking forward to teaching you today, and I'm happy to see you all sitting there, and I know that we will all enjoy this very much, or at least I hope so. So you may be wondering why an 11-year-old is teaching you today. Well, my name is Adora Svitok. I'm the author of Flying Fingers, Master of the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing, and this is a book that I published at the age of seven. More recently, I've been working on this book, Dancing Fingers, and this is a collection of poetry from me and my older sister, Adriana. And in this book, you can find all of our poems written between the ages of 8 and 11, as well as writing tips for kids, parents, teachers, everyone, and it's a really very cool book. So, today we will learn about poetry and how to write some poetry of our own. Are we ready to get started? Yes! Okay, great. So, I want to make sure, are you able to see this slide that says Poetry Made Easy with crayons on the side? <coughs> no. no. Okay. We did have it up before, but now it is not. Okay, that is very strange. Um, so, you are just able to see me then? Yes. Okay, there's no, like, small box in the corner? Or... There is no. You are in the small box, and the rest of the screen is blank. Oh, okay. So, I guess we will have to do it without the presentation today. Um, I will be writing a lot of stuff on the board, so you still will be able to see things, but um, that is a little bit disappointing. So, poetry. Poetry. The dictionary definition is literature in verse, literary works written in verse, in particular, verse writing of high quality, great beauty, emotional sincerity or intensity, or profound insight. Well, the problem with that is who's going to judge whether it's beautiful, emotional, or high quality. So I want you to come up with your own definition of poetry. What do you think poetry is? What is poetry to you? What's your definition? Like it, uh, like it to help you become. To help you become something. <clears throat> okay, Amina. Um, you can write if you're mad. If you if you can write poetry about your emotions, and then you can just write it all out. Okay, something to help you um, feel your emotions. Good. Any other ideas about what you guys think poetry is? Amber. Like kind of like about your life or something. Yeah. Okay. So let's make one classroom definition then. Let's take everything that you guys have put in here and let's say what we know writing is a piece of, or I'm sorry, we know poetry is a piece of writing. So a piece of writing that can help us become someone else, help us share our emotions, and help to understand the world around us. Nice job, guys. Very good. Okay, that is an excellent definition, I think. And so now that we uh, know what poetry is, we might wonder, well, why write poetry? Well, poem can be however long or short you want it to be, so you have a lot of choice when it comes to that. A poem can be a two-line couplet, or it could be a multi-page epic. There are many different types of poems, and poems are good vehicles for expressing our emotions. Very good. So you guys um, were talking about that. So raise your hand if you've ever been stuck trying to think of ideas. Oh, okay, I see a lot of raised hands. It's a pretty common experience. I have uh, been stuck trying to think of ideas before. A lot of my friends have. I think pretty much everyone I know has at some point. So to help us think about topics for poetry, we're going to take a look at some possible inspirations from all around us. So you can get lots of inspirations from for poetry from the things that you see around you. Trees, houses, coats, sidewalks, plastic containers snowflakes on the ground and um here where i live actually um most of the time we get rain and then we've all been or at least the kids have been jumping up and down because we're, we've gotten probably um i think more than four inches of snow so that's really cool so i i can get inspired by that i could write about this nice winter scene with a lot of snow around everything buried how my backyard looked completely different um so maybe you could write about something as simple as weather or how could you get a um, idea from looking at a coat? Make exact. Oh, the way it looks like in color of it. Oh, maybe the color, the way it looks. 
descriptive poem about a coat and then another thing uh, also we could write about what the coat reminded us of like of our grandpa or of someone we know uh, and also maybe how we feel when we wear the coat so all of these are great ideas and you can use a simple inspiration like a coat to create a really very masterful poem and these seemingly everyday things are excellent inspirations. And if you don't think that's quite exciting enough, we're always able to exaggerate. So let's say that I'm in the kitchen one day and I'm like flipping pancakes and maybe my sister is doing. And then one of the pancakes flips out onto my sister's foot and okay, she gets a sort of stained sock and that's all. And then later in the day she goes to the recital. Okay, that's not really too exciting, but I could exaggerate that. And does anyone want to tell me what exaggerate means? Very Christian. Um, to make things up, to make it more than it really is. To make it more than it really is. Very good. Uh, to sort of stretch the truth. So I could exaggerate by saying that maybe my sister thrusts the pan of pancakes up into the air. The pancake leaps out of the pan, does a double twirl or triple twirl in the air. Finally, after hanging in the air for a fraction of a second, it lands flat on her head. And uh, red batter, let's just say we were using beets or something, starts to ooze out all over her $10,000 Swarovski crystal embedded dress. Uh, yeah, that, that's a big exaggeration, that one. Uh, just as my dad pulls off in the driveway, ready to take her to her first concert at Carnegie Hall or something like that. So in reality, it might have been a $10 dress, and it probably had like fake plastic beads on it or something like that. And she was going to a very small recital. But we turned that into a dramatic, electrifying poem. And that leads me to poetry tip number one. We can um, both get ideas from everyday life and exaggerate them for poetry. So by exaggerate, of course, I mean stretching the truth, making it bigger, basically, to make it more exciting sometimes. And now, raise your hands, and this might seem rough, but raise your hand if you have pets. <laughs> ah, I see a lot of raised hands. Okay, very good. Well, that leads me to poetry tip number two. We can get inspirations for poetry from animals, like pets, uh, zebras, giraffes, fishes, or fish, uh, cows, owls, pugs, or dogs in general, actually cats. Uh, I, was, I actually had a bunch of clip art pictures on that particular slide, so I'm sad that you're not able to see it. was pretty cool looking. But here's a poem that I wrote uh, inspired by an animal. It's called Cow. I'm sure you can probably guess what animal I'm writing about. So the poem went like this. I have a most annoying cow who lazes in the sun. She torments every hen and sow and has a lot of fun. She gives no milk at all and moves away at night. And even when she's in her stall, she always picks a fight. Eventually, she ran away. Freedom had great allure. Away, away from her stall and hay. But she left a great deal of manure. Okay, so that poem uh, had a kind of whimsical ending. And um, I also put a little picture there. Maybe, maybe I'm glad you didn't see it. It was kind of gross. But uh, so <laughs> that poem was inspired, of course, by a cow. And while I, myself, have never owned a cow, then I've seen them before, and they're pretty cool-looking animals, if a bit placid. But, um, yes, yeah, so I was inspired by that particular animal. We can be inspired by farm animals, like horses, pigs, cows, chickens. We can be inspired by the more exotic uh, animals, for instance, tigers or lions. Um, or we could be inspired by more domestic ones, like cats, dogs, so you can use animals as great inspirations in poetry. And another cool thing 